Welcome everybody to this week's edition of Valpo Football Preview and we're joined as always by head coach Dave Cicchini. This is Todd Eichow and uh, coach off the first week let's just start right out. The assessment on, on your ball game last Thursday night, uh, difficult situation at Eastern sure. Kentucky. A lot of young guys, your overall thoughts. Yeah, I, there were a lot of positives to take away from the game. Um, obviously disappointing to lose by this type of score. I thought we could have kept things a little bit closer. Uh, but we accomplished a lot of our goals. Our, our defense uh, shut down their run. Uh, the, their first team really struggled to run the football against our first team defense. Um, uh, and unfortunately they were able to take advantage of some plays through the air and we didn't play the ball well in the air and I was disappointed with that. But uh, on the whole we really went out and uh, I would say did a, a fairly decent job of executing our defensive game plan. On the offensive side of the ball, we were able to put together some long drives, really dominated the time of possession, uh, which was a big part for us to really shorten the game. Uh, unfortunately, we had a couple of turnovers that uh, canceled out some drives. Had some young kids that, uh, you know, we were a lot of freshmen playing in, on that offensive line and, and at wide receiver. We had a couple of mental mistakes, a couple of breakdowns that hurt us. Uh, and both quarterbacks, I thought, were, were fairly positive. They both had their moments where they missed some open receivers or, or made a poor decision or a poor throw. Uh, but on the whole, I think they, they both uh, surpassed my expectations for going in first game of the year. Yeah, very, obviously very encouraging. And, and now you look ahead, and you, you said going in, hey, I'm a believer in, in getting at least two quarterbacks in there, or at least see what we have. Right. You know, Obviously, if you've got a superstar coming back, that's a different situation. Sure. But without the experience at the quarterback spot. And now you put a third quarterback kind of in the mix, and now let's look ahead a little bit to Sacred Heart. Yeah, well, you know, we're, they are a very talented football team as well. Uh, they are the uh, reigning NEC uh, champions, uh, so they went to the playoffs, represented their conference in the playoffs a year ago. Uh, very talented on both sides of the ball, but they did lose a couple of good players to graduation. Uh, they started off the season with a nice win against the Division II program, St. Anselm. Uh, on Saturday night. Um, it, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, they are defensively a, a very aggressive in your face. It's not a, a bend but don't break type of an operation. These guys force the issue. They're tough. Uh, they'll take a, a gamble. They'll, they'll play some man coverage and, and get up in your receivers faces and that's going to be a big challenge for us. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball for them, I think for, for them their offense uh, centers around uh, their quarterback. He's a good dual threat, does an excellent job throwing the football. They've got a wide receiver who does a pretty good job. Uh, and uh, I think that's, if we can stop and contain both of those players uh, on defense, we're going to have a chance. I think what it comes down to is we had a lot of freshmen uh, last week really step up. And, and some of them shined, some of them were, were just kind of had some first game jitters. But uh, there were a number of players uh, who I think can really benefit from the experience that they had last Thursday against DKU and and uh, you know on the defensive side, Joey Diaz Martinez had two interceptions and, and really stepped up his play and, and so he's going to get some more snaps at the safety position. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, uh, receivers like Ryan Moore and Gene Renee both stepped up and, and made plays against a really talented secondary and, and a couple of young offensive linemen like Houston Underwood stepped up and, and made some mistakes. But again, that's, that's all what that first game is about. We're a big believer that uh, the biggest improvement between you know, a football team throughout the course of the years between weeks one and, and week two, and, and uh, we're working hard on making it, uh, some improvement and helping us get a, our, a victory at home. Do you have a final decision here as we, you know, we're still looking four or five days before the ball game about how you're going to use the quarterbacks? Here? No, no, we really. We, we had a practice on Sunday, which we, we got an extra day of practice because playing Thursday, an extra day of preparation for Sacred Heart, which was nice, and, and we went out, and, and uh, it's still going to be a work in progress. We'll make the decision uh, probably after Wednesday's practice as to who's going to start and how much each quarterback is expected to play. And then we'll just go from there. Is there a good chance three quarterbacks will play? No, no, I don't think so. We, we'll, we'll keep, we'll narrow it down. Obviously, maybe a third due to injury, which, which obviously we're not planning on. But, but uh, uh, it will just be two quarterbacks um, that will get in the game for it. And obviously, it's the quarterback is always the most important position. Or at least most people believe that. But this is a game where there's extra pressure on the quarterback sure. because of how much the pressure they'll put yes, on him. Yes, exactly. Right? They are going to force him to make a quick read, and it's going to be tight man coverage and. In a lot of those situations, it comes down to if you have a receiver who can separate, if you have an offensive line that can just give enough time to protect the quarterback, and if you got a quarterback who's smart enough to find that man coverage and make the throw on time and on target. And on the other side of the ball, you gave up a little over 400 yards against Eastern Kentucky. 
in my mind, that looked pretty impressive. The 52 points on the board and that right. doesn't look good. Mm. But overall, I mean, they made some plays through the air. You've got to be encouraged going forward with what this defense has for you. Yes, uh, that's that's our strength right now, and, and it, it, it can we confirm that uh, going through the game, particularly with our first unit going up against Eastern Kentucky's first unit. They really held their own. Uh, I felt like they did a great job of executing our game plan, and, and uh, obviously things will be a little. We'll put some tweaks and changes uh, both to our scheme and, and to the, the, our depth as we move forward. And some of these young freshmen continue to prove themselves. Uh, but on the whole, I'm very pleased with where they're at right now. I think the secondary, obviously, a lot of veterans back mm -hmm. there. The front seven coming in was, if there were any question marks on defense, that's where mm -hmm. it was. A little less experience. Uh, but it looked like you know they held their own against them. Obviously, a very big offensive line. Uh, this is another week where you need that front seven, I assume, to get penetration, try to slow sure. the quarterback before he gets going, yeah. slow their running attack before he gets going. Kind of a similar situation. Right. And, and the other aspect of the, the that front is is that we get pressure on the quarterback right. without necessarily blitzing, and that's a hallmark of any great defense. And while we didn't do a great job of that uh, on Thursday against Eastern Kentucky. This is not, you know, uh, as talented of a group physically as Eastern Kentucky with the number of uh, major college transfers that they had. And, and uh, so that's going to be a big part for us to, to be able to just rush for and generate, uh, put pressure on the quarterback without necessarily bringing linebackers or secondary players involved in blitzes. It's going to be good to be at home. Good that's luck, right. Dave. Absolutely. Thanks. For head coach Dave Cicchini, this is Todd Eichel. Thanks for joining us this week on Valpo Football Preview.